writing a lot of my pieces started off with a mathematical idea that, that hadn't been there before. But as I worked, it becomes more organic. I wanted things that were curved and smooth and, and uh, not just hard and, and angular. And marble is the ideal material for that. It's an organic material, though it gives you back something that you don't get when you touch plastic. What you're actually doing is making a finer and finer surface until finally you get to the point it's like a mirror. Usually I, I don't like to polish that highly because it, it reflects much more back and it makes the work seem harder, but it does bring out the color and, and any patterns of the stone. So this, this piece, at least the center, is going to be quite highly polished. I had been trying to learn stone carving in Woodstock, New York, but I was very curious about marble, and I started carving in a wood and stone carving sculptor studio. Unfortunately, he wasn't a very good teacher, but the one good thing he did for me was to tell me to come, if I really wanted to learn stone carving, was to come to Pietro Santa. Leslie and I had been building a studio house in Woodstock, and it was not finished and winter was coming on and she was pregnant and we just decided we'd do it. Pietro Santa's a unique character really comes from the, the fact it was a working town. It used to be every little street off the main piazza had several marble carving studios. Michelangelo came here to open the quarries, and then it has become over the years the, probably the predominant marble trading center in the world, really. For a stone carver, it's like being a kid in a candy store. You know, everything you want is there. Choosing a stone, it's, uh, it's very convenient if it's sawn like this because you can see if there's any cracks in it, any inclusions, any, you know, breaks, anything that, you know, really bad coloration. You can't see all the way into the block, but you get a good idea from the external appearance of what shape it's in anyway, and if it's the color you want. The blocks are sometimes interesting art objects in themselves. I mean, look at this one, for example. It has the, the Madre Cava, the, the edge of where it was formed visible. But it's just a very uh, beautiful, cloud-like, uh, naturalistic plane. Beautiful stuff. Studio Pescarella is an old marble sawing plant, and this cooperative was made out of it. But it's basically a place where an artist can go and rent space and have all the advantages of working with other artists and have the materials and uh, the, you know the power of the air. The only connection uh, that uh, Studio Pescarella has with the artisan tradition of stone carving that area is Sauro. You still need the artisans who know how to do sculpture in the old way and you know, point it from a, a plaster model into marble. invited to work at the Enro company, who were at that point very interested in artists, uh, young artists, anybody who wanted to work in stone. You know, the Italians, that's just their nature to want to kind of show off what they know and to help you to do the same thing. 
it was a cooperative there that was executing work for well-known sculptors at the time and I you know came on to realize that one side of me was Henry Moore and on the other side was Isamu Noguchi it just gives you courage to you be able to you know realize that other people are doing something that uh, that you want to do and doing it so well and then getting recognition for it as well It's the blackest marble you can get, really, and it comes from Belgium. And uh, I kind of try to match the material to the piece I'm trying to do, to the design idea, to the you know the general look of it, and then this you know structure to be considered too. Since it's a small piece, it needs a little gravity, so I think the black gives it that. My father was, was very uh, traditional in, in a lot of ways, but he said, I, I want you to do what fulfills you. And I suppose that, that gave me the permission to perhaps take a less conventional path. We found this old house, and, and it was what they call a metato, a, a place for drying chestnuts and someone had added on three more rooms to it and made a house out of it. Charles Stefania. Ciao, ciao, Umberto. Buon pomeriggio a tutti. Leslie does her maiolica, it's called. It's a, you know, a red terracotta base that's been glazed with colors using only fruit and vegetables. I was making them 70 centimeters in diameter or so and you know that leaves a lot of space that the beautiful nature of the stone can come into as well the translucency of the stone the veining are visible and, and add to the beauty of the piece they call them portals they're like a window into another world. And also making the one surface on one side of the disc, joining it to the one on the other side. That disc, I have to suspend it from the ceiling. And so I'm having the brackets to do that made here. The place is called Fratelli Milani, and it's in a little town called Pomezzana, and it's a, a long, nice, twisty drive up there. <laughs> Several people I've taken up there have gotten car sick on the way. It's a machine shop tool making place where they make all the tools that one needs to work marble. If you have to have something made, that's the great thing about the Italian system. You can go there and they're interested in the individual artist and what he's doing, and they'll make you a pin of any size to mount a work on. Well, in, in tutto mi servono tre, mi servono tre di questi cuscini. Tre cuscini, tutti grandi così. Tutti grandi così per avere questa asta di un dieci dentro. E in acciaio inoxidabile? Cosa? No, è ottone. I mean, of course they want to make money, but they're also very proud of what they produce, and they identify with it. If you have a very clear idea of what you want to do, you're just removing the stone from around that idea. It's a travertine, you know, very common structural material in ancient Rome. This is a very similar travertine, but it comes from Iran, 
and it has this beautiful red color. I mean, how could you resist doing something with it? I just thought it was perfect for this, that form, you know, the atsamore, that basic elemental expression of love. <laughs> In the spring, Leslie and I pack up our work and ship it to our other home, Block Island. Some of the unfinished work is finished here. When you've started a piece and you've kind of gotten to the point where you know where everything goes, there's a certain corner you turn where from there on in you don't have to think quite so much about what you're doing, you can relax a little. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, but you don't have any more design concerns. My parents bought this place in 1948. Most of the construction I did mostly by myself. It's much more upkeep than our place in Italy. Leslie and I took a look at what we were doing and decided that this would be a great place to uh, show our work as well. Okay, we're home. We built a barn, which has become a, a studio. Probably do two shows or one or two shows a year. It's just a wonderful environment, you know, a natural environment to, to show anything, really. I want them to bring themselves to it. That's the beauty of abstract art. Your interpretation is, is what I'm trying to stimulate. That's why I don't talk about my work a lot, because I don't want them to take my associations for theirs. Abstract art, they have to work a little bit. They have to participate in the case. The light. Yeah. When the sun comes through, it's incredible. I love it. The same best way to deal with anything is to look at it, it's, you can stand aside from it. But once you in, involve touch and smell and taste, other sensations, it, it, it becomes a little more dangerous, but a little more real, a little stronger. So uh, I thought sense of touch was very important. And when you make something that's three-dimensional, you can touch it. This is a beautiful base for it, too. <laughs> I like to think that all my pieces come from the unconscious. It's more intuitive what I want to do, I think, than, than saying I'm going to sit down and do this, that, and the other. This is the classic question, can an artist be himself outside of his period of history and the other influences he has? And the answer is no. We're all the results of the conditioning we've had. That's what we are. So I suppose my work can only be an offshoot of what I am. <laughs> 